Hi, my name's Jackie. I've had poolies for 35 years, shown them and bred them. We have bred 11 champions. At the moment, I have six poolies. This is Martha, she's the oldest, she's 11. We have male Hank, who came from America. Six-year-old Glory, that's Martha and Hank's daughter. We have Molly, that's also Martha and Hank's daughter. We have Muffin and 14 months old Millie. They are, I would say, a medium dog, medium weight, medium boned, very lively. They do like a lot of exercise. They're not a dog to be left all day while somebody goes out to work. They need companionship, they need to be with their people. That's not saying they can't be left, because all dogs have to be left. You go shopping, you go out, whatever. But generally, they need to be with you. Uh, they need to be doing very active little dog. You can see the corded coat, which is not everybody's cup of tea, and it's fairly difficult to keep. It's not a coat for the faint-hearted. It takes a lot of work, especially when they are cording, when they're changing from puppy coat to an adult coat. They come in, black is the more common colour. They also come in white, fawn and grey. Fawn usually has a black mask and black tips to the ears and tail. And in all colours, the nose and the flues and the skin must be dark. The nose must be black and the flues skin must be as dark as possible. They arrived um, with the, the, the Magyars over a thousand years ago. They came in from Asia into Central Europe. They settled in, first of all, in the Danube Plain and then they spread across Europe. They brought their dogs, their cattle, their sheep and horses. Um, and there are records going right back then of um, pictures and, and, and various things of poolies that look very much like they do these days. Um, possibly coat wasn't quite as heavy, but other than that, and they settled, they had their flocks, and the poolie developed into their working dog, their sheep dog, and they are very prized. They are still very prized in Hungary as working dogs. They do work in other countries of Europe and America. Their behaviour is very much of a working dog, a sheep dog. They do like to herd things. If there's nothing else, they'll herd the family. If you go out for a walk, they like everybody to stay together. And they will race around and try and keep everybody in one small flock so they can keep control of them. They do have a tendency to nip the back of legs, which again is when they're working cattle, the herding, the healer part of it. But that can be stopped, obviously. You don't allow that. And, uh, but pu puppies certainly um, display that behaviour quite early. Temperaments are generally uh, very good. We've worked very hard on them. Years ago, uh, when they first came over from Hungary, um, they could be a little sharp, shall we say. They were a working dog and they'd been brought, in some cases, straight from working parents. Um, but obviously you can't live with a dog like that. So breeders have tried very, very hard. And we have now got what you see today, which is um, a, a very loving, um, very affectionate dog. They still prefer their own family. They can be standoffish with strangers. Mine aren't, mine love everybody, but some can be. And we always say to people, let the poolie come to you. Don't approach it yourself. Just let it come to you and they'll be absolutely fine. They love affection. They want to be with you. They like nothing better than cuddling up with you and watching television and taking most of the settee. <laughs> Martha here sleeps with us at night time beside the bed and follows me everywhere anyway. They just love their own people. They can be noisy. It would be wrong to say they're not and put people off, but yes, they can be. And especially if there's more than one, they will egg each other on. They're very good watchdogs. If anybody was to come to the gate, they're there and they're barking and nobody would get through the gate without you knowing about it. Um, 
having said that, you you know, you, you can teach a dog not to make too much noise. Um, so it's it's livable, but yeah, they, they can be barky. They're very good with other dogs, usually, and other animals. They're very good with children. They need to be introduced to children, obviously from an early age, and children need to be supervised and made sure that they know what they're doing and not hurting a puppy, not dragging it around. But brought up together, yes, they're very good, and they will protect their own children of the family. They're very loyal. As an only dog, they are fine. I would say they would then probably need more exercise and they would need to be going places like the park and things like that where they'll meet other dogs um, and have other dogs to play with. Uh, but yeah, they, they, they're fine as an only dog as long as they're not shut away on their own. Um, they're, they're, they're wonderful. They need quite a bit of exercise. They are sheepdogs, they're used to running around. We have six of them, so they do run themselves around the orchard. But if you had one and you didn't have any land, I would say it would need to go out at least twice a day, possibly for an hour each time. And they need free running. They need to go somewhere where they can be loose and, and just run. They're highly intelligent dogs. Um, sometimes we say they're too intelligent, not for their own good, but perhaps for our good. Um, they will learn things very, very quickly. So you have to be sure uh, when you have a puppy that you are teaching it the right thing and not letting it learn the wrong thing. Because once it has learned the wrong things, it's very, very difficult to get that out of them. They're very, very trainable. We always advise that people actually go to some sort of classes, puppy classes in the beginning, and maybe obedience or show training classes. They just love to be doing. They enjoy being taught things. Very good at tricks, very good at agility. Poolies are doing extremely well in agility. And as I say, very good for obedience. Uh, there are poolies doing obedience as well. Basically, they like to work. They like to be doing something. Some play with toys, and that can be used as a training aid. Martha, for instance, wouldn't be interested in a pile of toys if they were thrown for her. But food usually is the best training reward. Little tidbits. Most of them will do anything for a bit of biscuit or a bit of liver or something like that, um, as I think most dogs will. Poodle puppies are born uh, rather like poodle puppies with a crinkly coat, smooth for a couple of days and then it begins to crinkle. It gets quite fluffy. When they go at eight weeks to their new homes, they're just a bundle of fluff. Um, they can then be brushed uh, until it starts to mat. The coat starts to mat usually uh, between about six and 10 months. It can be as early as four months, it can be later, 12, 13 months, but at some point it will start to mat. The mats then have to be literally pulled apart. You can do the whole of a puppy, you go back the next day and you wonder what you actually did because it's matted again and it will continue to mat. You continue to pull the mats apart and eventually they will stay broken up. Then you have the basis of a corded coat. You have little short uh, cords, which you then keep separating. Um, and obviously they grow, it, 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 the coat grows all the time um, until you get this, obviously this, as we call cords. Um, once you've got a fully coated dog, um, you really only need to go over it every couple of weeks or so because what happens is the the root uh, growth will cling together. So you need to go over them, literally just pulling the cords apart. It's quite therapeutic actually, a bit like knitting. 
So that just needs keeping on top of. Once you're into a full coat like this, the work decreases a lot. The main work is for 18 months to two years from the time they start to cord until you've got a really good corded coat going. And that really needs to be taken into account if anybody's thinking about having a puppy. It is a lot of work in the beginning. Um, as I said, not for the faint hearted. It can get on top of you very quickly and in some cases has had to be clipped off for people to start again. So a lot of work but worth doing. We tend to clip our old ones off. There's not a lot of point when they do get quite old keeping them in a coat like this. They can be clipped at a younger age if it was necessary. My own feelings is why have one? If you're going to clip it off, why not just buy yourself a puppy from a short haired breed? You could, and a lot of people do, shorten the coat. For the show dogs, the coat is a floor length coat. Um, there's nothing to stop people cutting it, uh, maybe three, four inches, even five inches above the ground, so that they've got the corded coat, but it's not, it's not touching the ground all the time. Um, which is, is probably a better option for anybody um, who just wants a pet one but, but wants to keep the coat. He's trimmed underneath because we don't show him at the moment. That's why his tummy's bare. But if you look at her, she's, she's corded all the way under. They don't molt. It's one of the good things about them. They're very good for people with allergies, asthma, eczema, that kind of thing. You can't guarantee that. There are people with allergies that are allergic to them. But generally speaking, we have sold poolies to people, especially with asthma, who have managed really well because there just is no coat flying around. One of the things about poolies, a bit of a myth, I think, is that they smell. They don't. They would do if they were left to their own devices and never kept clean. But they're bathed and they're dried. That's another thing that takes up a lot of time. A fully coated poolie, it can take most of the day to bath them and get them dry. The main thing with them is that they have to be dry. If they're not dried, then yes, you do get that wet towel smell that's not very pleasant. They have to be dried, but as long as they're bathed and they're dried, um, in the winter their coats are, are, are bunched up so that they're not dragging in the mud. Um, they're absolutely fine and no, they don't smell. In Hungary, of course, working dogs they wouldn't have the sort of coat these dogs have got because it would get pulled out with them working. They've got briars, they've got all sorts of things and the coat wouldn't be as, as good and as heavy as it is now. So m most of the pictures you see of working dogs, uh, they've got a, a, not such a heavy coat, a thinner coat, shorter coat. Um, there are even stories of the shepherds shearing them. I don't know how true that is, but we do we do hear stories of them being sheared when the sheep are sheared. Um, as I say, I don't I, I don't know how true that is, but this is this is a show coat now. This has been developed a, a little, looked after a little better, and and than uh, they would be if they were working. We do um, health test uh, for poolies. We have two problems that we test for. One is hip dysplasia, which is fairly common. A lot of other breeds have that. And the other one is retinal dysplasia, or multifocal retinal dysplasia. This is an eye condition. It doesn't cause blindness. It folds on the retina. But if affected animals are bred together, eventually we will get detached retinas and that means a blind dog. So we have a code of ethics within the club which all breeders must abide by. All breeding stock parents have to be hip scored and their score needs to be within the mean score at the time. All breeding stock has to be eye tested. They have to have a clear certificate before they're used. With the retina dysplasia it is present in puppies. If they have it, it can be detected at six to eight weeks. So all puppies have to be eye tested before they're sold. And anybody buying a poolie puppy should expect to see 
a photocopy of the father's hip scores and eye test, the mother's hip scores and eye test, and the puppy's eye tests. And all those should be clear. Otherwise, you really just don't do it. They're a very hardy breed, very robust. They don't suffer too much from illnesses, food things, that sort of thing. Fairly easy to feed and easy to keep. Anybody thinking of buying a Pooley needs to ask themselves, really, is this the dog for them? Um, they're a fairly high maintenance dog. I suppose there are some that are perhaps more, but you need to have time. You need to have the time to, to do the coat, um, but you need to have time to spend with them, uh, not just walking them. You don't want to be just taking them out for a walk twice a day and then sticking them in a crate and not doing anything else. You need to spend time with them. Um, you need to exercise their minds as well as their bodies. They're not a dog for a busy family who are going off to school and off to work. They really do need people around them. If you do have the time, then they will make you a wonderful pet, an absolutely brilliant pet, but you have to put the work in. If you do decide a Pooley is for you, you need to decide whether you want a male or a female. My feelings are that there really is no difference. It depends on the individual dog not the sex of the dog. A lot of breeders will choose the puppy for you and that's fine. We like to meet our buyers first. They come and see the puppies. Sometimes they come and see the dogs before the puppies are even born. Then they come and see the puppies when they're about four or five weeks. And that's when we get a really in-depth interview with them. And we work out what the people are, what their lifestyle is, whether they have children. And we can usually pick the puppy that's going to suit that person. So if your breeder wants to, to pick and says, this is the puppy for you, generally speaking, that's fine. They know what they're doing. If you do decide to have a puppy, then the best way to go is to the Hungarian Pooley Club of Great Britain. The website address is uh, Hungarian Pooley Club of gb.co.uk. If there are any puppies, they will be listed on there, or contact the secretary. Basically, they are the most wonderful dog. So I've had them for 35 years. I can't ever imagine not having poolies. They're a lot of work. Uh, sometimes you think, gosh, why am I doing this? Especially when you're cording a puppy again, starting again, and the hands are a bit arthritic, but I could never, never be without them. Uh, they're a joy, and they are my life, really. Mm.